Right, good morning folks. It is just coming up six o'clock and today, very special day, it is a cheat day for me. So I'm just on route to VK for my first client, but before I go, there's only one breakfast to have, isn't there? Morning buddy, can I get a sausage, egg and cheese bagel uh, as a meal with a flat white, please? Cheers, son. Can I get a couple of um, sweetness for this as well? You're a star. Thank you. Have a good day. Oh yes, I've been looking forward to one of these for a while. So we have the obligatory McDonald's hash brown and sausage, egg and cheese muk bagel with, of course, a flat white. So I am just sat outside the gym because that's the best place to eat McDonald's just before you go into the gym. So I'm going to crack on eating this. Oh, oh that's so good. I know for a fact from obviously having this a few times that I am somewhere within the region of about 500 calories or so, five, 600 calories, and I will put them up there for you. So that is meal one. And now I've got a client to train. Then I'm catching up with my maid by Moore's Lot because it's their very final session today. So we're gonna head down the beach, get a session down there, get ahead for a coffee afterwards, and then see what we fancy for lunch. So I know a few people are wondering, Moisey, why are you doing a cheat day? Well, as some of you will know, I've been dieting for a long time now, since the beginning of October last year. And there's been fluctuations on that diet, Christmas, birthdays, uh, my attempt, <laughs> 20,000 calories that didn't really go to plan. And uh, I've been doing a lot more research into the psychology of food. And usually I implement things like refeeds, where you increase carbohydrates um, slightly for a day and increase calories with it. However, this time out, I've done a lot of research into cheat days, and although they are not the most uh, advantageous thing for your physique, they can be actually quite beneficial psychologically. Because you don't track, you basically remove yourself from my fitness power, so you're able to look at food in a, I suppose, normal sense, or what most of the populace do, in the sense of that's tasty, that's not tasty, as opposed to that's that many calories, that's that many calories. And it's just a well, structured diet break for one day. And what the 20,000 calorie challenge or 12,000 end up being proved was that one day doesn't upset the apple cart too much. So it's almost one step backwards to go two steps forwards. So today, I'm not gonna be tracking until the end of the day. So future Chris is gonna look after the macros and calories, etc., that you see on screen. And I'm just going to enjoy some food and eat intuitively. Now with an intuitive cheat day, it is very much a case of you eat, but once you feel full, you stop. You don't binge, you don't gorge. Uh, it's not like the 20,000 calorie attempt when it's trying to consume as many calories as possible. I am literally just going to eat today what I feel like eating when I feel like eating it. So this morning, woke up fancy that McDonald's and then for breakfast, potentially pancakes, but we'll see. We've got a little bit of work to do first, so I'll catch you guys in a bit. Right, here we are on a very windy beach with my season five lot. Give us a wave. <laughs> Get some coffee. <laughs> right. Meal number two. We have this big ass muffin. <laughs> You're right, love. <laughs> Probably about five, six hundred calories, but yeah. Right, so back home after this morning's Mabel Moy Moise session and feeling a bit peckish. Fancy something sweet. So you know what? There's only one thing for it. Pancakes!
go, meal number three. It is white chocolate and salted caramel pancakes, as you've already seen, with whipped cream, an Oreo broken on top, and maple syrup. And the calories and macros for that is on screen now. Right, let's tuck in and enjoy. Hell yes, I'm going to enjoy this. Been waiting days, weeks to have something like this. Oh. Oh my god. It's so good. Hmm. So you guys know how many calories this is. I haven't got a clue. I've got to work that out in a minute. All I know is it tastes like a lot. I've got to show you this. Check that out. Mm. So good. So good. Sweetest thing I've ever, oh, the sweetest thing I've ever eaten. But that was damn good. I've been waiting for them for a very long time. So, done. The worst bit now though, is washing up. <sighs> right, mountain of washing up done. Self created to be fair. And now we have Formula One and the leftover milky bars or milky buttons for all the babies. William. You. Polly, for you, Penny, for you. Right, so it is quarter past one, and enough time has elapsed from the pancakes that I'm peckish. And Pizza Hut do a five pound pizza deal. Pizza's done and I'm feeling full, so I'm gonna stop there. 
Uh, in terms of the calories and macros, they are here. <laughs> and I may come back to this later on, but I have got a Nando schedule for tonight, so it's probably best to leave things be for now and get ready for that. So I'll catch you guys a bit later on. Tell you what, on a serious note for a second, I cannot tell you how nice this feels today. When you spend your whole life revolving around macros and calories and exercise and fitness, etc., it's so nice just to let it all go for a day. I mean, I love exercise, I love training, I love tracking my nutrition, I love being in control, I love teaching people about it, but every now and then, this is just so pleasant to literally just forget about the calories of food, forget about this is, you know, not good and bad, but, you know, this is calorific, that's not calorific, you've got to adhere to this target, you've got to do this, and it's so nice to just go, I feel like eating that, and I'm going to. Honestly, I would encourage anybody to try this. If you're trying to lose weight and you're on a program, etc., then obviously it's a bit different. But in a general sense, if you are mindful like the majority of the time, I would encourage all of you to just have one mindless but conscious day. A day where you don't worry about calories and macros, etc., but you don't go stupid, you listen to your body, you know? I could have easily eaten the other half of that pizza, and normally I would have done. But because I am stopping when I feel full, so that I don't feel sick or bloated or anything like that, then it's pleasant. It's a nice experience. I'm getting to enjoy some tasty food, and I'm not feeling like shit for doing it. Right, I'm feeling a little bit peckish after the pizza for something sweet. So we have four, a uh, four, pff, can't count, five Oreos and a little Maltese bunny. Calories and macros on your screen. I gotta go. Bonnie. So it is quarter to six, and uh, this happened. Yeah, that's two pizzas. Two pizzas. It's just turned 6.30. Mr. Bond's rocked up in his new motor. Hello, Mr. Bond. <laughs> and we are off to Nando's. Right, so we've done the Mackey D's, we've done the pancakes, and we've done the two pizzas, and now it's Nando's with these jumps. Jumps. <laughs> <laughs> So we have butterfly chicken, garlic bread, and mash. Mr. Bond, yours looks very appetizing. One cut. Oh, it won't come out. Oh. It won't come out. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so Nando's is done and I couldn't resist. Cookies. The time is 10 to 9 back home. Because I'm an old man, we don't stay out late these days. Picked up some Domino's cookies. I'm not going to have all of them. I may have maybe one, maybe two. We'll see how well I lost it under the sofa. 
We'll see how well one goes down and then pace ourselves from there. In my defense, I only had two. So, on that note folks, I'm gonna wrap the video up here. I think we've hit about 6,000 calories today, but it's been interesting. It's been awesome to just release the shackles on my mind and basically just be able to eat what I feel like eating when I feel like eating it, and my God, have I done that. But at the same time, it's quite surprising how crap, crap food makes you feel. I felt this when I did my attempts at the 20K, but even more substantially uh, this time out, because I felt great earlier on in the day, but as the day's gone on, and I suppose my body's begun to absorb the poorer choices of food, and because obviously I'm, I'm used to eating a more balanced diet these days, um, head's become fuzzy again, a bit like it did with the 20k, so it really does show that when you have poor food all the time, you do adjust to it and you do get used to it, but once you begin to tidy up your diet and you find a good balance between the shit and the good, if you will, then you do f tend to find that the poorer choices or having too much poor choice food really does begin to impact you and your energy levels drop, you feel lethargic, as I said, fuzzy headed, just feel tired. Um, so there's a lot to take away from that when you're thinking about having the shit choices of food. It's about remembering the way that it makes you feel, remembering how I feel right now. Because I'll be honest, right now, I don't want anything poor choice. I'm looking forward to tomorrow of getting back onto the program again, having a salad. <laughs> I know I said that at the end of the 12K, but honestly, you do begin to appreciate the better choices of food when you do days like this. But in my experience now, there is a lot of positives to come from this. Like I said, I've been able to relinquish the constant caloric maths going on in your head whenever you're on a diet or being mindful about your food choice. I've been completely free today. There's been no guilt involved. I've eaten for the, for the sake of whatever I feel like eating. I've gone back for seconds if I felt like it with the pizza. And it's been really, really nice just not having to worry about the caloric content of my food or anything. So I do think that psychologically going forward, there is a lot to take away from cheat days as well as from refeeds. I've been an advocate for refeeds for a long time now, but there is certainly some weight in a cheat day, especially if you're someone that has previously suffered, uh, suffered with binge eating or has particularly disrupted relationship with food. I think a day like today could be a saving grace. The hardest part, not been necessarily hard for me, but I can see it being hard for others, is that intuitiveness to recognize the feeling of full and stopping yourself and go, you know what, I have, I've had enough, I don't want any more. And I think that's the bit which will be the hardest for most people. But if you can master that, I do think that in a day-to-day -day circumstance, at maintenance calories or in day-to-day -day life, I do really think that cheat days do have promise to be something that you can factor in on a sub-relatively frequent basis, depending on kind of how life is for you and how restrictive or controlled, let's say, you are with your caloric intake. But anyway, I'll wrap it up there because this video is probably already long enough and you've pretty much spent the whole day just watching me eat some food. So if you enjoyed this, please do me a favor and give the video a like. Uh, if you can give it a share as well, that'd be fantastic just so you can share this information around Facebook. It's quite interesting going through this and I would encourage you guys to give it a go yourselves. Um, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do so already. And of course, if you're not liking the page, then please give it a like and make sure you've got your notifications turned on so that you see my posts at the top of your Facebook newsfeed every morning. Otherwise, you might miss one. But on that note, folks, I will see you on the very next, uh, very next video. Thank you so much for tuning in and all the best.